likely in for Baba today. Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. Since I put the windows up, we have had like torrential rain for days. And really, uh, I should have thought of that, I should have known, but this foam, expanding foam, is great for blocking out drafts. But I hadn't yet siliconed the whole thing. This is just a little bit of it. You can see there's water getting in there. You can see there's water on the workbench. Normally I've had like rain buckets up here and they've been filling up, I would probably say like a liter an hour when it's really raining hard. Maybe not quite that much, but these things leak terribly. They suck. And I hadn't yet siliconed them, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, make a couple of, I don't know, like a little metal awning. Just, I've got some pieces of sheet metal, I don't know, maybe 16th thick that I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna notch it to match the profile of the ridges of the sea can. And I'm actually gonna mount it like this. That way we can shed as much water as possible. And then uh, the hardest part to silicone would be up in this top part here. And so as long as we get that awning on there, we shouldn't actually have to silicone that because there'll be no water coming up into there. But we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna silicone the edges, the bottom, and then also silicone this whole thing. We'll cut out all this foam that we've put in. Um, that'll stop drafts and stuff. But once we cut it all out, then we can see exactly where we need to apply the silicone. And I want to get this done because right now it's not raining, but it's supposed to rain again. And we just had a ridiculous amount. We actually had like a little mini tornado right over our horse corral. Maybe I'll put a little clip of that in right here. So that was actually like on our land, literally 100 feet away. We loaded up into the van and then I filmed it so that if uh, things got out of control, we could just hijack out of there. But gonna do that for that window by the main workbench as well as for this one here uh, this one's obviously been leaking a little bit it's nice because it's been a very controlled leak and it's been dripping off of this little piece here and I've been able to catch all the water in that bucket but that's not ideal it's muggy in here now it feels moist I've had to like spray down my milling machine and all my tools with WD-40 just because I'm worried about rusting also if you're working on knife blades in here that's a bad thing too so Today we've got a lot of little projects to do. Uh, I've got a new bench vise mounted. Pretty stoked about that. Uh, and we're just gonna get some of this stuff done. Stuff we need to take care of while we can because it's supposed to rain this afternoon again and who knows, this is like, I haven't seen this much rain here for years, but we'll get at it.
right, so I've uh, got the windows done. Uh, I still need to paint them, just letting that silicone dry. Whipped into town, dropped off some knife shipments to FedEx, and oh my word, that was so frustrating. Canada Post, with this like looming strike, I can't ship anything via Canada Post, and it really sucks. I'd hate for the knives to get stuck in transit somewhere, but my goodness, it's expensive to ship FedEx. Anyways, I had previously built, was it last week sometime, this stand. I didn't do a video on it, I should have, but I built this stand for my sharpener, and I'm actually gonna take that off. Um, one reason is that real estate in here is at a premium and for the amount that I'm actually sharpening a knife and how uh, how much time of the process that is, it's probably not worth having a knife mounted permanently on its own pedestal. But I picked up an 8 inch buffer and um, then I can actually use some bigger rather than these little 6 inch buffing wheels. I'll show you what I've been using lately. This is one that I got from my uncle, and he made it, and this looks like a furnace motor, I think. And then you can buy these little adapters for them that just kind of screw on, and you can run six inch wheels. Not ideal for the amount of buffing and the amount of work I have to do, so I'm gonna leave this one set up on here. I'm gonna run that wheel, and I'm strictly gonna use it with Autosol that I use for polishing. This stuff's awesome. Um, I've been asked about this before and I'm actually gonna put this stuff up in my uh, Amazon store because this stuff is amazing. It puts in a ridiculously great uh, polish on metal, uh, chrome, metal, you name it. And also, once this is on, it also adds a little bit of rust protection as well, which is nice when you're dealing with uh, carbon steel. So. I'm going to leave that one set up and the wheel for that is strictly going to be for that auto saw because I don't like to use the same wheels as I have with uh, my different compounds. And then I will save these bigger wheels strictly for the buffing. So I should be good. I'll use this one for like my black and brown which is real uh, a coarser compound. And then this will be for like white or green. I'm not exactly sure, but it'll kind of be nice. Right now, I have to constantly switch out the different wheels. Like this is the one for black and brown. This is the one for green. And this is the one for that auto saw, uh, just the polishing compound. So it'll be nice to have everything set up and I'm not going to be switching. And um, that will have three different wheels. Uh, should be good. Should be a good little setup. So. So I need to prep some of these sheets for my little sanding block. Uh, every couple weeks I just like to do a bunch. So I'm actually not low in stock, but uh, when you're in the middle of making knives, it's such a pain in the butt to not have pre-cut sandpaper. So I'm just going to go ahead and prep some of that right now. these I cut them um, three inches wide four and a half inches long so from the sheets that I use they are nine by eleven so I'll cut one strip off of here and I end up with pieces this big which are great for just random sanding things and then I end up with this piece that's four and a half by three which fits perfectly on my little sander been asked about the sander a lot where I bought it I made this one I uh, showed it before just a little piece of aluminum I milled uh, basically groove all around each end and then down the sides on the top so all you really do uh, two o-rings o-rings where you have to replace them every now and then and just have a two piece of steel bar 
and that's how that goes. Alright, so we just had a little bit of a downpour. Why wouldn't we? Can we see? Um, we just can't go a day without rain, it seems. But let's have a look at what we have going on. Now, this was enough rain for sure that would have leaked before. And it's totally dry. It used to come in like crazy right there. This part of my workbench used to get soaked. And everything is as dry as a bone, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's working pretty good. Um, let's check over here. Yeah. That's where the water always was, was right there. So I do believe that doing that uh, worked. Let's see where my welds were. Still need to get it painted, and um, I'll do that tomorrow, maybe, if it's not ready. But. So I'm just gonna finish a little glue up on this knife here. Um, this is a knife ordered for Sean. Sean, if you're watching, this is your knife. Um, two pins, doing a, a blasted finish on the blade. So it'll be a little bit matte. And then uh, olive drab G10 with orange G10 liners. I actually think that's gonna look pretty snazzy. So we're going to get this glued up tonight, and that way tomorrow I can finish it off and get onto the sheath. But, uh, yeah. I tested out the new uh, buffing wheel, and it works pretty good. Um, nice to have this little setup here. And that's pretty much it. So, yeah. I'm going to get this handle glued up, and I'll be back at you with another video as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.